What is going on everyone? This is Sulky and today we're going to go over everything you should know for your first playthrough of Story of Seasons, including the importance of saving and loading the game, relationship levels and their benefits, farming and mining. But before we get started, give this video a like if you're excited for this new game and if you're unfamiliar with it, it's actually Harvest Moon just under a different producer so they couldn't continue to use the name Harvest Moon, but you're probably going to be familiar with this if you played the 2003 Game Boy version of Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Town. And if you've never played any of those before and you have played Stardew Valley, it is exactly like Stardew Valley in terms of the game mechanics. You can build relationships, you own a farm that you inherited through your grandfather, you pursue different activities based on which season it is in the game, you can build relationships and fall in love, and of course mine and upgrade your tools for farming. All right, so now that you've started a game, I think one of the most important and emphasized features of this game is farming. So you start off with 500 gold in your pocket, and I would suggest utilizing that immediately on your first day when you enter the game. It's gonna be the second day of spring. I would run on over to the general store and buy some crops so you can plant them that first day of gameplay. Now this is gonna be important because you do not want to buy seasonal crops when the season is almost over, because then it's just gonna be a waste of money. They might not grow in time and you're not gonna reap the benefits of how much money you make on those items if you were to sell them earlier on. Once you get to the general store, you're gonna see that Jeff has cucumber seeds, potato seeds, and turnip seeds for sale. Go ahead and buy them and then go back to your farm, till the land and plant those seeds. You're gonna get nine slots for seeds here, which is great. And if you are playing Stardew Valley, you're gonna see the benefits of that because you're not just getting one little plot of seed for each one you buy. You're actually obtaining nine seeds. So once you go back home and plant them, just make sure that you're watering them every single day. And you're gonna notice that this takes up a ton of your energy. But what's great about that is that you can actually head south from your farm toward the hot spring. And if you go ahead and take a quick little bath in there, you're gonna watch your energy replenish rapidly. And it's great that it's right next to your farm because you're gonna utilize the majority of your energy in that location. So every time you see yourself running low on energy, head on down to the spring and rejuvenate yourself because the last thing you want is to be 10 a.m. in the morning and you're already drained from the farming that you just did. Now, the last thing that I wanna mention about farming here is that if you end up messing up your farm when you're tilling it, do not worry. You can patch up that piece of land to get it back to its normal state, which is that light brown color. Go ahead and plop a branch on that piece of land that you messed up to return it to its natural state. Now, once you get animals, you're gonna have to worry about grass and things like that to feed your cows and such, which you can obtain from the Yodel Ranch. The coop and the barn that you already have on your piece of land can hold up to four animals each. So once you have the amount of gold to purchase animals, go ahead and visit Yodel Ranch and buy them. They're like thousands of gold each, so it's probably gonna take you a bit to actually get that money. But once you do, go ahead and buy all of the other things that you need to raise your animals, such as a brush and some food. Animals are a great way to get some money in the game, but if you don't have enough money to get those animals, what can you do instead? Now, one of the things that the mayor actually suggests is foraging around the forest area. You could go ahead and walk around and you'll probably run into some items that you can put in your bin and sell. And of course, if you've already started your farm, you have that to look forward to as well because you are going to gain a profit from those fruits and veggies that you sell. And while it could take some time to actually build up the amount of gold that you have, do not worry because you can actually get a horse for free. And the earlier that you do this in the game, the better. And I'm gonna tell you why in a second. Now, if you have time to do this on your first day of gameplay, then go ahead and do it. But if not, just wait until the next day, no big deal. But you're gonna meet Mugi for the first time during spring as you're wandering about. And he is going to offer you a pony the next day, asking you to take care of it. Now, it is very important that you do a good job taking care of this horse, because if your affection level with your horse is high, by the end of the year, Mugi's actually going to let you keep it. So free horse, I can't stress this enough. It's super, super important to maintain a high level with your horse because you're gonna end up losing that opportunity to get a horse for free. 
So go ahead and buy a brush, brush it every day, and you'll be good to go building up that relationship. Now, speaking of relationships, you may have noticed a heart next to some of the characters in town's names when you initiate that dialogue with them. Now, there's definitely some benefits to increasing your friendship with other members of Mineral Town. So again, similar to Stardew Valley, you can improve your relationships with other members of the town by giving them gifts every single day. So in the beginning, I think, you know, why not just give them whatever it is that you have on your person? Because it's going to be a little difficult to get unique and rare items that early on. So see what happens when you give them a gift. And if they like that, just continue giving them that gift. If they don't like it, make sure you change it up with them. Otherwise, you're really not going to be able to build up the relationship. Now, after a while of building up a relationship with one of the characters, you actually have the potential to date them and eventually marry them. In order to get to this stage one, you're going to obviously have to have a good relationship with at least one person in the town. But you'll end up seeing Basil and Jeff talking about using flowers to talk about their romantic feelings. Once you have your flower, you can go ahead and go up to the person that you're trying to pursue and see what they say. If they don't end up liking you, don't worry. You still have the opportunity to build up that relationship with them. So don't give up there. Now getting married is a little different. There are actually some prerequisites to this feature. So make sure that you have a big house and a big bed to go along with it. If you're getting married, obviously you're gonna need those two things because there are now two people living in your house. But other than that, you just need to have the orange level heart with that person that you're trying to pursue. And once you are at that high of a level, you can actually obtain the blue feather in the shop. And that's what you're going to use to propose to that person with. But other than pursuing someone for romantic reasons, there's actually some other benefits to having good friendships with people. So for example, the mayor. You'll have the ability to get gifts during the winter month through the Christmas socks feature. Now, obviously that's a ways to go if we're just picking up the game now, but that is at least something to look forward to in winter and you have a long time to actually build up this relationship with him, which is great. And the same actually goes for Ellen. But in order to even obtain presents through the Christmas socks, you're going to have to build up your relationship with Ellen, which unlocks that feature to begin with. Now, if you decide to build up your friendship with Anna, you're actually going to unlock her cooking classes, which is pretty great. And in order to get a kitchen, this is a side note here, you're going to have to go to Gott, who can upgrade your house and farm. You're just going to have to work your way up getting those materials for him. Once you do that, you'll be able to utilize your recipes that you learn, making Anna's cooking classes way more beneficial for you. Now, it's good to also raise your friendship with Carter because you're actually going to unlock the back of the church. And this is really beneficial because it's going to allow you to forage some unique items, including mushrooms and truffles, which are obviously going to be beneficial to you financially. Now, speaking of finances, it's really great to befriend Wong because he's going to unlock the apple game for you. And the apple game is this sort of mini game that you you can play with him. And if you are lucky enough to win the Apple game, you can actually get up to 1 million gold from Wong, which is just amazing. Now, other than that, you have Duke in Mana. You can actually obtain a part-time job from by working at the vineyard during the fall season. Now, while you're pursuing this part-time job, you can actually let Cliff know about it. And if you do, he will stay in Mineral Town. But if you don't, Cliff is actually gonna leave the game for two in-game years. So if you want Cliff around and you are in year one, do be sure to let him know about this part-time job opportunity. All right, let's move on to mining now because mining is really, really important to know about when you're beginning the game. When you just started, I suggest going to the mine sometime in your first week and at least digging up to the 13th floor so you can find some ores to sell and get some more money. And on top of that, and if you could find some auriculum ore, you could actually use this to craft a brooch. And if you do that, go to Saibara's shop and sell those for 1,800 gold each. Now, some other things to note about mining is that the 
ladders to progress further down into the mine will not change when you are loading the game, which means when you go into the mine, the ladder is going to always spawn in that location. So if you want to save your energy, go ahead and find out where the ladder is on that level of the mine and then reload back into the mine and you can run straight there to avoid losing a ton of stamina. And that way you actually have the opportunity to progress lower and lower into the mine without wasting a ton of days in between. And now that it's out there, saving and loading. Now this could be very beneficial if you use it to your advantage. Say you don't like what just happened. Maybe you didn't have a good interaction with someone, whatever it may be, you have the opportunity to go back in time because you get to choose when you save the game. So say that you go and give someone a gift and they hate it. You don't want to ruin that opportunity and waste a day giving someone a bad gift when you're trying to increase the friendship with them. Save the game. Then go ahead and go up to the person who you're trying to give a gift to, see what they have to say. If they don't like it, just reload back into the game without saving and that way you can repeat that interaction and give them a different gift. And now that is about it for all of my tips for first starting Story of Seasons, Friends of Mineral Town. If you have any more suggestions, leave them down in the comments below. I'm sure that I've missed something. There's a lot to this game, but I think most importantly above all is just enjoy yourself. If this seems like too much for you, if it's too overwhelming to do all of these aspects, just do one or two at a time, get used to them, see how it goes, and then you can progress with other events and stories in the game. Anyway, if you found this video, helpful be sure to leave a like and hit the subscribe button for more nintendo content i appreciate the support and i will see you next time <laughs>